Hiya, it's Amanda here from Lolly Lulu Crafts and today I am doing a tattered lace project from the new release dies and we have a couple of them here. There's the cute little lion, a darling little dumper truck and the little back of the dumper truck is a separate part as well so that's kind of cool and then a set of little sheep um, that is a border and that is the one that we are going to be using for today's project. So to start off with I want to create a background so I've taken an A4 piece of cardstock and I've just taken a piece off the end there because I don't need the whole piece and then we're going to use this make a scene stencil. Now as you can see there are lots of elements on the stencil but you don't need to use this specific stencil if you don't want to. You can easily make your own using any dies that you have or just by cutting stuff by hand. It will, you'll be able to see from what I'm doing that that would be simple enough to do. So you don't need to worry if you don't have that particular stencil to hand. So what I've done first of all is I've popped out from our stencil the sun and the two clouds and I've put a little bit of removable adhesive on the back of these and I'm just sticking these down in position on my sheet of card here and they're going to act as just a rough and negative space on our card when I put down my colour. So the paint that I'm going to be using is acrylic paint. We're actually going to be starting off with our grassy area and that was soft green. Now I've watered it down quite a bit for the top area as I, and then as I go down the page I'm using less and less water which will then intensify the amount of pigment so therefore making it stronger the closer uh, it gets to us in theory. We're trying to make it look like the horizon is further away, therefore slightly more translucent and then the bit closest to us has more pigment and more intensity of colour, hence less water in it to give it that more pigment and stronger looking colour. Now I'm just going back here with a little bit more water just to make that even more translucent than it was and this isn't really watercolour paper so I'm needing to be a little bit careful because I wasn't entirely planning on doing a lot of water on it I was thinking I was mostly using acrylic anyway now we are putting down my stencil and I'm using here the little hills and these hills are the ones that are far away so they're going to be quite watery again to get that real translucent colour so I'm just coming off the stencil down towards the horizon so that as little of the paint as possible will smudge under the stencil onto the white area it will mostly if it's going to smudge anywhere it will smudge onto the grass so that wasn't uh, a problem and you can see it's nice and translucent now for my second set of hills I actually flipped the stencil over to reverse the look and I'm also going to use a stronger green because these Again, to give the illusion of things being in the foreground and the background, I'm using a different green to make it a stronger colour and give it that perspective. And you can also see that I am mixing the two greens on my brush. So I'm not only going for perspective by adding the stronger pigment, but I'm also getting dimension by having the different tones on there as well and there we go let's lift that up and doesn't it look really cool and I think it looks really effective and you can really begin to see the dimension coming so now I'm just taking a finer brush with a little bit of paint and a little water and I'm just smudging that bottom edge of our hills there just to kind of blend it into our foreground and our kind of grassy area in front of the hills so it kind of looks like it's part of it rather than just sitting on top. Okay so next I am using the scrap of card that we had from the A4 sheet that we used at the beginning and 
I am just painting onto it a set of the hills using a darker green and a paler green and to really get some depth to the colour now because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these out and pop them up so that we get not only the perspective of them being in the foreground because of the depth of the colour that we're using but physically we're actually moving them forward in our eyesight as well through popping them up on 3D foam and you'll see once I lift this that there's a little smudging from the paint that was on the back of the stencil but I wasn't worried about it because I knew that I was going to cut these out and so now finally to our sky so I'm just really watering down this paint because I wanted it to be a very delicate blue colour so um, also to help me I've actually laid down the hills stencils but the kind of inner part over the tops of our hills there so it will just help stop me putting any paint onto the hills that we've already painted. Now I painted off the stencil when I was around the hills which will stop the paint leaking underneath. With the clouds and the sun I really haven't worried too much about how I do that because it doesn't actually matter where uh, whether the paint gets underneath or not because we're going to be using white acrylic paint for the clouds and then white acrylic paint as a base for our sun. That'll cover up any little leakages of blue underneath our templates there. They're really there just as a guide as to where I want to put my elements because it's quite useful visually to have them there. Okay so I've let everything dry and now I've used the negative over my clouds and I'm using white acrylic paint and a sponge and I'm just dabbing on the paint over the whole of our stencil of our cloud so that will cover up any blue leakages that we have and also I'm doing it quite thickly so that the cloud has sort of bubbles of paint in it so that it looks kind of cloudy and sort of fluffy and thick and because we're using a sponge and it's not watered down at all and nice and thick the paint sh won't leak at all underneath long as we dob down vertically okay and probably not smudge it sideways as well um, but luckily no accidents so then repeating the process on the second cloud and as you can see I'm carefully holding the template up because I'm too impatient to wait for the first cloud to dry so I want to do all of these elements in one go and let them dry all in one go which is going to be fun when we get to the sun but anyway so we're just again dobbing that on with our sponge just to create a thick kind of blobby dimension with our cloud and you can see there it, it looks quite cute I think with the kind of fluffiness of it. So now to the sun and again I've just put the template over in the same position as we had the other part of the template and I'm starting off by putting in a thin coat not a blob blobby coat but a thin coat of the white acrylic paint this will just neutralize any of the blue we would have covered it up with the yellow just fine but it's possible that you wouldn't get a pure color if you went straight in with the yellow so for the sun we're going to be using a yellow and an orange so that we just add a little bit of dimension to it so now we're going to just do a full coat of our yellow over the white and again just using our sponge just dabbing it on so that we don't get any leakages and it's just a nice thin coat nothing too heavy because we're not creating dimension or anything like that we're just trying to create a smooth color next we're going in with our orange and we're just going around the little edges of the rays now that's quite difficult to do just on its own because there are other elements there that are kind of in the way so we might we have gone in a little further than I would want to but I'm not too worried about that because it gives me the opportunity to then go back in with the yellow and then it kind of blends a nice sort of halfway house color between the two because we're going over almost all of 
the sun again just leaving the very tips of the sun orange but where it kind of crosses over the two the orange and the yellow you get that kind of mixed tone which looks really cool so there's that sun complete and I think that looks really effective. I love the way that turned out and the clouds. So now just one more thing to do and that's just add a few little tufty grassy bits in and I'm using a mixture of the greens here depending on where I'm going to put them. So I'm going to add a couple more of these and there you can see the finished look and that's all of our background done. So now we've got our two tattered lace dies, the sheep and the new sheep border and I'm going to cut those out on my little cuddle bug. So we've got my A plate, my mat, my B plate, then we're going to put on my cardstock and then my sheep die and then the cute little sheep border I just adore this so cute pop that on and then our B plate and run that through the machine now don't worry about the fact that my machine is moving that is just because it's on that mat I should have taken it off the mat so it's not really sticking to the table Okay, so bring that back to the front. So we've just had one pass and then you can see already the dies have just popped out and the die cuts are already popping out as well. So you can see it's just a beautiful cut. So there's our little sheep and I've just gone through with my pokey tool to get all those little bits out and there's my sheep border. Oh, aren't they just adorable? Okay, so there's my little flock, but I now need to separate the baby sheep. And uh, so I'm just taking a pair of scissors and I'm cutting them apart. And then I'm just going back in and just softening that shape at the back there. And obviously on the other two, it will be on the front. And that just uh, gives us then four little sheep. And they're just so cute. Look, aren't they adorable? Okay, so there's my flock all separated and I think uh, now we need to give them a little bit of colour so that they look a little bit more realistic. So using my markers, I'm going to just colour in their faces, etc. So I'm just starting with the paler colour, the W5, and I'm just outlining the edge that links there's like a cut line and it links sort of the internal cut line because I just want to be sure that I don't go over into the other area. I mean, it doesn't matter desperately, but to just think it's easier to start off with the paler colour. So now I'm swapping over to the darker colour and what I'm going to do is just work all around the edges so that we create definition because obviously the shape of the face is rounded so the sides and the bottom and the top would be further back so they would be darker and the front sort of snout area as it were I'm sure it's not called a snout in a sheet but anyway that would be paler so we're just going to go around the edges blending in with our W7 And then around the other side and the bottom and you can see it really highlights the cut lines that are in there that are to add character like the eyelashes and the little smiley mouth and now we're going in with my W3 and we're just blending in that edge between the two colors and also obviously coloring in that center panel panel piece Now what happens is when you use a lighter colour it does take away some of the saturation of the darker colour so you will find you need to go back in to get that definition back with your W7 around the edge there and then go back into the centre again and this time just blending very lightly from the edge of the W7 into the middle so that you're not going over that piece again and then we're going to do just that cut edge there so it's no white and now we're doing the legs so I'm creating a darker shadow area at the back of the leg 
using my W7 and then I'm going to go back in on the front of the leg with the W3, uh, 5. Now what I did do later on is actually go back and do his little ears and I just, for the, in, the ear that's over the sheep, what I did is it's completely cut out so I slid a piece of paper underneath it. You'll see what I do on the smaller sheep here. The smaller sheep I actually are only using W7 um, but what, you'll see what I do is I slide the piece of cardstock underneath the ear and I'm just showing you that here because I've actually already coloured the ear but I'm just going to redo that anyway to put a bit more colour and you can see I've just slid the paper underneath it and that means that I'm not going to get any colour on the body of the sheep and now I'm just finishing up this one little face and as I say I only used W7 for the little sheep I didn't use any different colors because it's just too small really I don't think it needed it so and what I did want to do is make sure that I really colored around those edges so there was no white edge okay and there's my finished little flock and you can see that really does make a difference and they look so cute Okay, so now we're going to make the card base and we're starting off with a card that's 8 by 8 inches. Next, I cut down my background to 7 by 7 inches and just neatened that all off and I think that looks great and it's going to fit fab on the card base. So next I'm cutting my layers from this gorgeous coloured cardstock and this first one is this gorgeous yellow and I'm cutting it at seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter and that's going to have my background sit onto that and I think that just brings out the sun. I did think about doing the blue or the green but I felt that the yellow just made it pop really nicely. Next I am cutting a green layer which matches in perfectly with the green of the grass that we painted and I'm cutting that at seven and a half by seven and a half inches which will again be just a small margin up from our yellow piece but will leave a reasonable gap of about a half an inch gap of the white background of the base card so I think again that's going to look really nice because you've got the white clouds and the white sheep so I think having that layer with that slightly larger margin like that is going to work really nicely and just bring it all together and all those colours kind of really coordinate really well. So the next thing to prep before we can put this card all together is my sentiment stamp so we're going to be using my color box ink and this set of stamps from my pink stamper called even more punnylicious so i'm using the one that says you are the best ewe so i'm just inking up my stamp just using a piece of white cardstock which will coordinate really well with the rest of the card and then what I'm going to do is just cut this into a little flag shape. So I think that's going to look really nice on the card and the stamp has turned out really good as well. Okay, so now we are at the point of putting the card together. So first of all, the inside, as you can see, I have a piece of the blue cardstock and I cut that to seven and a half inches square. I then cut a piece of white cardstock to four inches square and stamped on it a happy birthday. So I'm going to use my wet glue here and I'm going to stick this down on the inside of the card. So there we go and it looks really nice and it matches perfectly with the blue of our background that's going on the front of the card. Okay now to the front of the card I'm going to stick our background down to its first layer which is the yellow cardstock and for this I'm using my wet glue. This is just so that it really will help any kind of wrinkles etc that is in the paper because of the wet paint going on it and that will help stick that down nice and flat. And you can see it's got real pop with that yellow on there. So 
just pressing it all down making sure that every little bit is stuck down and real firm press because then you can be sure that it's completely flat and all those wrinkles are pressed down smooth okay now that's all stuck down nice and firmly and it's all smoothed out I'm going to use my double-sided tape to stick the yellow layer onto the green layer and then the green layer onto our white card base okay there we go and I think that looks really really nice and it stands up nice and firmly because we've got that extra whoops <laughs> um, extra layer of card on the inside as well Okay, so the next thing I decided to do was add a ribbon onto the card. I wanted to do this before I added all the 3D elements because I thought that would be a lot easier and probably a little safer since I didn't want to knock them. So I just did a simple knot bow here and so I just tied it and pulled the tail so they stayed at an angle and then just cut them to not too long, quite sort of mid length to short and there it is finished and I think that looks really effective okay so don't panic you haven't missed a whole heap and I finished the card I've just done what I always do and lay the items out just so I can get a feel for where I want everything to be put now as you can see I've already put the 3d foam on so I'm just peeling these off and I've left everything kind of in position and then I'm just going to peel the backs off each element in turn and just stick it down rather than move it all off the page at least this way I've kind of set things out I know what I want to have where and I think it looks so cute with these little sheep and I'm just sort of putting them on the hills and you know um, what I'm trying to do as well is sort of do obviously the big sheep in the corner there but also with the four little sheep I want to do odd numbers so I've kind of grouped three together and then I've put the one off to the side slightly on his own and that's generally considered more pleasing to our eyes to have odd numbers like that so and I think personally just looking at it it looks really cool anyway so I'm just uh, fiddling around there trying to decide exactly where I wanted that one because I just wanted to get it absolutely right and then the last little sheep is I say going over there on his own he's obviously gone off for a little wander and then we've got my little hill that I cut out I, on the separate paper and as you can see I've just taken the edge of that and just made it straight so that I can line it up onto the edge of my card because otherwise it was going to be too far in if I'd um, left it as it was and also the actual edge of the hill there was at an angle so it wouldn't have looked right anyway so it was best to cut that off so now here's my big sheep now what you'll see is that because of the edge of that hill there that corner I can't stick my sheep down because the 3d foam underneath the sheep is catching on the edge of the hill so I'm just taking a little snip off the corner of the hill so I can see if I can just fit my little sheep in where I need it to it's still not quite working so I'm just going to move that piece of 3d foam over very slightly just to give myself a little bit more space so that I can tuck the hill underneath the head of the little sheep and then it, that just makes it all sit together really nicely and there we go fits together perfectly now and I just think that looks so adorable I love the little sheep with that big sheep I just think it works perfectly together now I've got my little flag that I created with my sentiment stamp on it and I'm putting a piece of the 3d foam on the back of that as well and I've got to fiddle around with the positioning of the flag in view of the flowers that I want to put on what I want it to do is for the flag to kind of be nestling into the flowers but without the flowers kind of obscuring the sentiments so I've just got to sort of put one bit down and move it around and what's the beauty of putting the glue gel on the flowers is that I can twist those around and pl play around with the position so that they are achieving that effect and I can move the petals until they're not 
interfering with the sentiment at all and I can even move them over very slightly and it's not going to be a problem whereas obviously with the foam tape that's it and you've got no maneuverability at all so we're just putting the glue gel on the last of the flowers and then we're just going to pop that underneath the other one and I think having the flowers there really adds to the nature sort of feel of the sort of design that we've got there okay so next i just am adding a couple of little stick pins there's just one sort of crystal at the end of each and i've got one blue one and one green one so there you go a closer view for you you can just see how they fit in really well and then the last little thing on the flowers is just this little pom-pom ball it's so cute and I found this lovely little green one and I just felt the fluffy kind of nature of it was really appropriate for the sheep I mean you could have actually covered these little sheep with loads of those I think that would have looked so fun obviously not green but white ones and I had some really baby white ones so believe me I was tempted but I just didn't want to cover them up I wanted you to see how pretty the sheep were and then finally on the flowers I'm just adding two blue pearls one in each of the little center of the flowers there okay and that's it our card is finished and just one more thing i added a sheep to the inside i couldn't resist i had to bring them in on there as well so i think this is absolutely adorable i hope you like it as much as i do i really enjoyed using these new dies and i think they're just so cute just cutest cutest cute so thanks for watching and i will see you again soon bye for now